Moving on, that takes us to the business portion. We had this pretty cool post going on in the group, I think um, last month, and I'm going to actually read aloud a lot of the concepts here. We crowdsourced a cookie contract based on a lot of people's experiences, mostly bad, where they said to themselves, oh my goodness, I wish I had that written into my terms of services. And I figure kind of reading through some of these, we kind of rewrote them to be a little bit more catchy and fun, but it might make some of y'all think, hey, I wish I had that in my cookie contract too, because the best thing about expectations is setting them before you need them. Um, nothing's worse than a client saying, well, what are you going to do about this? And you're like, oh, I forgot to mention that's actually not refundable. So let me read through some of these. I really enjoyed them. Everyone was really great in creating them. Payment due, you pay, I bake. Payment is required up front so that I can source your cute cutters, spectacular sprinkles, and perfect packaging. Your payment reserves your pickup date too, so win-win for all of us. That one is a, a all-important one. I, I highly encourage if you haven't gone to the payment first type business, do so. It's a matter of time before you create something and somebody doesn't pay before you feel burned that you wasted a lot of time and got no, no payment for it. So this next one is... I've had a bunch of experiences with it. When people don't come to pick up their cookies that they already paid for, it is kind of crazy that people can do this, but they do it. Um, we said no show equals no cookies. These cookies are best enjoyed fresh. Not showing up to the agreed upon pickup date forfeits your order, but take heart. We'll donate them to a family in need. Need to reschedule your order. Awesome. Reach out X days prior to your pickup time. That's awesome to do before you need to use it because if people don't show up and we've had people in the group say that somebody's knocked on the door over two months later looking for their order. Ugh. Refunds. I can offer refunds up to 24 hours after payment is accepted. Unfortunately, after that time, I cannot offer refunds as your cutter order has likely already been placed. But the good news is you get cookies. Um, some people have a no refund policy. Absolutely fine. These are just ideas for you guys. Moving along, delivery clause. All orders are pickup only if that's what you offer. Delivery can be an option if you live within X miles of this pickup location with an additional fee of X dollars. I love a good drive. Bonus if that drive is past the Starbucks. That's an awesome one because if you do not want to deliver, you need to let people know that before they say, okay, well, when are you dropping these off? Um, and if you do want to make some side cash, then possibly offer that as an upsell. I'd be happy to deliver for dollars. And a lot of people will take up on that because they don't want to drive themselves. So it's a win-win for everybody. A lot of these are win-wins for everybody involved. Uh, pickup dates and times. Delivery and pickup times are set upon ordering. This is because other customers need their cookie fix too. We have bulk pickup dates to accommodate most schedules. So put that cookie pickup date in your calendar. It is great to remind people, hey, this is designated. This isn't something you can, hey, I can't make it. I'm so sorry. Can I come tomorrow? There's nothing more obnoxious than having to constantly be ready for someone to knock on your door and you don't know when. So saying, hey, listen, you know, set this date and time at, before they order so they know what they're getting into. Uh, change cutoff. Decisions are tough, but we're here to help. Order changes can be made until X date. After that, all changes requests will be under consideration and a small fee may apply. I think a lot of people think if a door is left open, that means they can walk through it. So if you don't shut that door, they don't know that they shouldn't. So be fair to them. Let them know that you don't want changes after a certain date. I think everyone will be a lot happier. Inspiration. This is a good one when we start talking about Disney characters. I'm almost hesitant to say it on this podcast. Um, thanks tons for bringing those inspiration pictures. They're just that inspiring, but your cookies may not be a perfect replica. We'll try to keep it close though. Here's another great one. COVID care. We know that you can't control when you have come in contact with a person who has COVID and we want to work with you. Need to reschedule your event. We can freeze your cookies for two weeks so you can stay at home and rest. And that's fair to everybody because, you know, if as long as you explain to them, cookie, these cookies stay fresh that they're frozen, but they can't get a refund because you've already rendered services. I think it works really well for everyone. In a hurry. While I can't accommodate last minute orders all the time, I will make my best effort to orders placed with a turnaround time of under X days will require a rush fee of X. Let people know that up front. I know a lot of people think, oh, I forgot this. And they're all really willing to pay that rush fee. We just feel so awkward asking for it. But that's what we're used to. If I ask most businesses if they could hurry it up, they'll either let me know if I have to pay extra and then it's my decision. Well, I can, I can wait a little bit longer. Or yeah, sure, take 10 bucks. I know I'm late. 
Uh, price adjustments. All prices are subject to change. Price is often dictated by the ingredients cost. I'm always trying to provide the best tasting cookies to my clients. This means I can't honor old pricing because a local grocery store won't honor their old flour prices. Darn it. Um, that's a great one if you're also ch choosing to raise your prices because you have been undercharging. So nobody's kind of grandfathered in and you're not working with multiple different pricing structures. Uh, product photography, say cheese. We create replicas of our client orders to photograph these sweet looking sweets. If you do not want your cookies in the spotlight, please let me know at the time you place your order. Secrets are safe with me. Uh, somebody in the group had taken uh, photos of a cookie that was meant for someone who was in the hospital for something. And the client said, hey, I do not want you to post that to your page. But the girl had spent a lot of time baking and decorating, and she thought it was a little unfair that she didn't have that expectation up front. So she couldn't post them, but if she had asked ahead of time, she possibly wouldn't have been able to work with the client to see if she could have posted them or at least set her expectations that, hey, I'm not going to get a lot of credit from these. Uh, this is another one about the Disney thing. Copycats, copyrighted images, think Star Wars and Peppa Pig are protected, and I won't be able to replicate these baked goods. Who wants a cookie controversy, right? We can make a similar color palette, color palette, though, so let's talk. That's always a great option. Like, hey, I can't do it exactly, but let's talk. We can find a workaround, and I think a lot of people are pretty open to that, too. But setting that expectation ahead of time goes a long way with clients. Uh, pictures are worth a thousand words, but they're not always accurate. Colors and lighting and photos may be slightly different than what you end up with. Also, cookies and photos may, may not be true to size, which is a bummer. I'd frankly love to eat an eight and a half by 11 cookie. So that's just, again, setting expectations with clients. I know most people won't expect that, but it's that one-off guy. You're just kind of making sure that they get it. Uh, eeny, meeny, order minimums. That didn't rhyme, but I am a baker, not a poet. I require minimum order of X dozen, need fewer, stay tuned for a pop-up shop announced on my Facebook page. I love this one because it says, hey, listen, I want your order. I do not accommodate small orders, but I can at a pop-up shop. So I'm not telling you no, I'm telling you yes, but not right now. And always turning those no's into yeses uh, is a great way to deal with people. It's all yours now. <laughs> this is a good one. It's all yours now. Once you pick up your order, thanks again, by the way, what happens to your cookies, cocoa bombs, and car doors, I hate door dings, is all on you. Keep them safe, keep them cool, and keep them away from the parking lot cart returns. And that's just a jovial way to say that once it leaves my porch, man, if that boy, bad boy melts, if it cracks, I'm so sorry, but it is your problem now. I am the baker, not the miracle maker. That's me, miracle. Um, ship shape. As much as I love to hand deliver each and every batch, unfortunately, I often need the help of USPS. I do my best to package the cookies for the rough ride, but broken cookies are a possibility and a non-refundable risk you take when you're placing an, a shipped order. Also, while I ship priority, I can't guarantee that rain, sleet, snow, or hail won't delay your order. Refunds can't be offered, but know that they're on their way. Once tracking information is provided, claims for lost orders can be placed with USPS. And this is something that actually Etsy does. Once you ship the product, you are no longer liable. If you add tracking information into your Etsy account, the liability falls on the ship, the shipping company and the client, and you are out of the mix. So if somebody says, oh, I never got this, and Etsy says, listen, they provide tracking information, then you're kind of done. Yes, it can leave you a bad review, but they cannot force you into a refund. Uh, this one's a good one. No ghosts. I'm easily spooked to get your order just right. I'll need you to reply to my messages within X hours. Otherwise, I may just have to wing it. And I'm good at winging it. Just ask my eyeliner. Questions for me? Please give me about X hours to reply. I'm usually covered in dough. And again, this is setting expectations on communication, which is so great. Uh, achoo! Allergies? Baked goods are often made with foods that can be known allergens. While I can do my best to accommodate, I can't always accommodate allergy-conscious orders. Please do reach out. I may have a perfect referral for you. If you are not a gluten-free kitchen, if you are not an allergy-free kitchen, it's best not to take those orders. You definitely need insurance if you are thinking about that. But I always like to find somebody in my neighborhood who is good at baking those types of orders and give them those referrals, you know, and still works. You're not... The customer can't order from you if you're not allergen free. So at least hand them off to somebody who could possibly hand you an order down the road. It's a great collaboration uh, right there. Cottage foods laws. This is a great one. Uh, cottage food laws. This has been made in a home kitchen, not inspected by X. Our kitchen is not nut free, egg free, or dairy free, or gluten free. Boring disclaimer, but we have to say it per the law. Tips cowboy hat, Shayton's sheriff pen. That's a funny way of saying something that is very boring. I know a lot of you have to say it. So Definitely check your cottage laws on disclaimers that you're required to tell people. Um, 
Yeah, I think that here's another great one I really like. Pay means yay. Once you submitted your awesome payment for your awesome order because you're awesome, you're accepting the above terms, which is awesome because my cookies are awesome, so awesome. And that's basically saying, hey, if you order, you agree to terms and conditions. And that's with most of the things we use in life. I don't think anyone's going to be too turned off to this as long as you kind of take this jovial approach. Uh, again, these aren't legally binding. I uh, kind of wrote them myself and used a lot of people's help in the comments, but they are a great way to get ahead of problems instead of letting problems get ahead of you. So for today's business minute, the cookie contract is awesome. I'll put the link to this post in the podcast notes, but again, feel free to use, and there's a lot more in the comments that are people just adding some really awesome ideas, things that you could take, pick apart, change, make work for you. And I highly recommend it.